when rati or love is the sthayi bhava the vibhavas enumerated by bharata are the presence of a hero or a beautiful romantic atmosphere pleasant seasons flowers cool breeze etc this is the cause for rati or love to blossom the anubhava that is the reaction in our body when we are in love is a, a smile a love loan glance or a sweet gesture of speaking or the movements of a subtle movement of our limbs the vyapichari bhava can be dreaming sleeplessness restlessness etc hence a combination of all these three elements create shringara rasa shringara rasa has two aspects love in union which is called as sambhoga shringara and love in separation which is called the vipralambha shringara which is a separation from beloved love can cause anxiety yearning fatigue inactivity and the likes which are the anubhavas <laughs> First of all, my pranams to my guru and uh, namaskar to all the rasikas who are with us today. Well, I'm very happy to be here to talk about two beautiful aspects of our lives. That is movement and emotions, which are very, very integral part of our day-to-day -day communication. And in the language of dance, movement is... expression through movement is called as angika abhinaya and expression through emotions is called as satvika abhinaya the well, indian classical dance is a poetic representation or a glorification of what happens in our day to day lives which otherwise we think is an ordinary emotion dance is an expression to that particular emotion and in this presentation i would like to give a very brief insight into these two topic satguru pyo namaha movement and emotions are integral part of our lives our day to day activities are filled with physical movements as bharatiyas as indians we freely express our emotions relating them to our actions in the language of dance when a dancer communicates through her physical movements it is called as angika abhinaya when she communicates with emotions it is called satvika abhinaya both these are interrelated abhinaya means communication even in our day to day lives we see how our actions are related with emotions it could be as simple as saying namaste and greeting with a smile or asking people how are you doing today is everything all right did you have your food or when you are even addressing a child so all these are actions which we see in our day to day lives dance is just the imitation and glorification of what happens in the world natya shastra is the earliest extant literature on theater arts it comprises of 36 chapters which covers every aspect of theater adi bharata muni who is the author of this extant text says there are four mediums of communication angika communicating through the body movements vachika a verbal communication aharya which is an external medium of communication for a dancer her jewelry her makeup the stage lights all these are the external medium of communication and satvika abhinaya an emotional medium of communication today i will be talking about the two medium of communication angika abhinaya expression through body and satvika abhinaya expression through emotions angika abhinaya a dancer communicates using the appropriate movement of the body the posture and also the hand gestures these sets of body postures movements distinguish one style of dance from the other in indian classical dance there are about 
eight different forms of Indian classical dance. Bharatanatyam, Kuchipudi, Mohiniyattam, Kathakali, Kathak, Manipuri, Satriya and Odissi. Similarly, there are many regional dance forms and folk dance forms. What distinguishes these dance forms are the movements of the body and the posture and the hand gestures that they use. Well, it is so beautiful to see the Natya Shastra gives a gamut of um, grammar, the movements. So we have movements of the head, movements of the hands, movements of our sides, chest, feet. So every part of our body has a movement which has been given by Adi Maratha Muni in the Natya Shastra including the facial expressions, the facial movements, that is the movement of the eyes, the movements of the eyebrows, movement of the lips, chin, cheek and so on. Angika Abhinaya is classified further as Shakha, that is if we take branches, that is if we take a body as the main trunk, the hands are like the branches. Ankura, the appropriate usage of the hands. Like for example, when we show a flower, a bird, goddess Lakshmi, rays of the sun, a beautiful breeze. So usage of your hastas are very, very important in Indian classical dance. And the third segment is Nritta. That is the movement, dance movement vocabulary, which includes the posture as well as the right hand gestures. As a Bharatanatyam dancer, I would like to say a few words about the movement vocabulary in this form. The basic unit of movement in Bharatanatyam is called as Adavu. And Adavus are all a subset of this, rather a combination of whatever I have mentioned earlier. Training in Bharatanatyam starts with the learning of Adavus, which are the building blocks of the form. Adavu is a combination of three elements, namely the posture of the body, sthana, movement of the legs or the feet variation, which is called as Padaveda, and gestures of the hands, hastas. What is important for a dancer is the symmetry, the posture of the body. The beauty of symmetry is analyzed by Bharata Muni under the definition of Saushtava. Saushtava is an important aspect of Angashuddhi. Angashuddhi means perfection in the executions of various Angas. It adds majesty to the movements and enhances the personality of a performer. I would like to demonstrate a Jati in Bharatanatyam, which is a combination of various Adavus. It does not communicate anything, but a performer experiences beauty and transmits the joy to the audience. Ajati in Bharatanatyam. <laughs> We see beautiful sculptures in our ancient temples and these sculptures are with beautiful postures. What are these postures? These postures are the moments captured in the movement and these beautiful postures are called as karanas. Karanas have been described in the fourth chapter of Natya Shastra titled Tandava Lakshana 
and this has been defined as Hastapada Samayogat Nrittasya Karanam Bhavet. The combination of hands and legs is called as Karana. Bharata Muni has classified Karanas as Angika Bhinaya under Nritta Karanas. Karana is a basic unit of dance just like Adavus how it was the basic unit of dance for Bharatanatyam. It is a combination of sthana, that is body posture, chari, movement of the legs, and nritta hasta, movement of the hands. Various combination of about three elements make 108 karanas. Though categorized as nritta karana, just like the movement of the body, a karana can be performed as a movement, karana, can communicate an idea or mean something by itself or it can communicate an emotion as well. Now, I would like to demonstrate a sequence using the Nritta Karana for a Swara. The sequence portrays a romance between a hero and heroine. Though it does not have any lyrics, it suggests the romance between the two. You can see how the karanas used for a man are different from the karanas used for a woman. Emotions are basic to human beings. We are nothing but our emotions. Dance being but a reflection of reality makes emotions a part of itself. Emotions in Indian classical dance or what we call as Sattvika Abhinaya is communication which involves mind. It's an expression of our inner self. Sattvika Abhinaya is an emotional communication which is the very essence of dance. Rather, it is the heart of all the art forms. Sattva means mind. It involves mental concentration. It is our true inner self. An expression of that true self is Sattvika. Sadaha bhavaha sattvam sattvasi idam sattvikam. Anything related to true inner feelings or emotion is Sattvika. Dance or drama is a medium through which we are made aware of otherwise an ordinary emotion that people go through every single day. It is very important to understand the concept of bhava and rasa which are the very basis of Sattvika Abhinaya. The concept of bhava and rasa are discussed by Bharata Muni in Natya Shastra in the chapter 6 and 7 respectively. According to Bharata, the ultimate goal of any art form is rasa and the closest translation to this beautiful expression is aesthetic experience. The main ingredient of rasa is bhava. Bhavas are like raw rice, raw vegetables, spices which when cooked are very tasty which you experience a beautiful feeling when you taste just like that. Rasa is that aesthetic experience when you witness a performance. Concept of bhava and rasa are something which every human being experiences in their day-to-day -day lives. The poetic representation or glorification of such experiences on stage is dance or drama. Bhava. Bhava is feeling. It is called so because it is experienced. Bhavayanti. Rasa literally means essence or taste. 
Rasa is the aesthetic experience derived from watching a performance or reading a work of literature or even watching a beautiful movie. Natya Shastra speaks of eight rasas, Shringara, Hasya, Karuna, Raudra, Veera, Bhayanakaha, Bhipatsyadbhuta Sanyum, Ityastav, Natya Rasaha Smritaha. The process to obtain rasa is given in a formula in Natya Shastra as Vibhava Anubhava Vyabhichari Samyogat Rasa Nishpattihi, which is a combination of Vibhava Anubhava and Vyabhichari Bhava, which creates the rasa. Vibhava is a cause that triggers the emotion. Anubhavas are the effects of our reactions to that emotion that is the physical changes in our body. And Vyabhichari Bhava are the transitory emotions, emotions that just come and go, but they strengthen the Sthai Bhava, which is called as the dominant emotion. The Sthai Bhava is a dominant emotion, is influenced by Vibhava, Anubhava and Vyabhichari Bhava in various degree. When combined in the right proportion and presented, the formula gives rise to rasa. Human beings are said to have as many as 41 psychological states of mind, which are called as bhava, such as love, mirth, sorrow, terror, etc. But among them, only eight have a durable effect, which are the sthai bhavas on the human personality, and these constitute the basis of eight rasas. The remaining 33 bhavas have only a complementary or the casual effect. Vyabhichari means that which comes and goes and moves towards, particularly moves towards something. Rati or love leading to Shringara rasa, Hasa or laughter leading to Hasya rasa, Shoka or sorrow which leads to Karuna rasa, Krodha or anger which leads to Raudra Rasa, Utsaha or Enthusiasm, which leads to Veera Rasa, Bhaya or Fear, leading to Bhayanaka Rasa, Jugupsa or Disgust, leading to Bhipatsa Rasa, Vismaya or Wonder, which leads to Adbhuta Rasa. When Rati or Love is the Sthai Bhava, the Vibhavas enumerated by Bharata are the presence of a hero, or a beautiful romantic atmosphere, 
pleasant seasons, flowers, cool breeze, etc. This is the cause for rati or love to blossom. The anubhava, that is the reaction in our body when we are in love, is a, a smile, a love-lone glance, or a sweet gesture of speaking, or the movements of a subtle movement of our limbs. The vyabhichari bhava can be dreaming, sleeplessness, restlessness, etc. Hence, a combination of all these three elements create Shringhara rasa. I would like to demonstrate a small example for Rati. I will take up a song, which is a padam, which is a combination of Rajaswati Tirunal, Chaliye Kunjanamo. Here, the heroine is addressing to the hero, Lord Krishna, and she says, O oh Krishna, let's go to Brindavana. Kunjana, where the breeze is so cool, the leaves are showering down, the flowers are blooming, everything in nature, fish, deer, peacock and peahen are together. Isn't this the right time for us to be together? Here, the Nayaka, the hero, and all these facets of nature are the Vibhavas, are the reasons for her to be in love. That is the cause for her love to be strengthened. Anubhavas are her reactions when she sees different aspects of nature, which only strengthens her love. Sham Hari Hari Chaliye Kunjan Mohatum Ham Mile Sham Hari Hari Chaliye Kunjan Mohatum Ham Mile Sham Hari Shringara rasa has two aspects, love in union which is called as Sambhoga Shringara and love in separation which is called the Vipralambha Shringara which is a separation from beloved. Love can cause anxiety, yearning, fatigue, inactivity and the likes which are the Anubhavas. You will now see a clip from Jayadeva's Ashtapadi Savirahe. Just by closing her eyes, the legendary guru, Dr. Padma Subramanyam, depicts the emotions the heroine undergoes due to the separation from her beloved Krishna. You can see both these reactions in one frame as she closes and experiences these emotions and also how she physically experiences these emotions. <laughs> Rohini, 
When a performance is filled with sattva, undoubtedly the audience watching it is absorbed. During the duration of the performance, they are temporarily suspended from the three worlds. The anubhavas or reactions are voluntary actions. They can be taught. On the other hand, the sattvika bhavas are involuntary actions. Hence the vibhavas, anubhavas and vyabhichari bhavas can be taught to artists by a teacher to be performed on stage. But the sattvika bhava has to be felt and expressed and cannot be taught. It is only through experience that an artist can emote through sattvika bhavas. Bharata says, just as the well-disposed person can enjoy the taste of food and can attain pleasure and satisfaction, cultured people can also taste the sthai bhava when they see it communicated through the proper channels and thus derive pleasure out of it. It is in general called Natya Rasa. When a Natya gives rise to Rasa in the audience, which can elevate and make them more refined, then that is true Rasa. And such a performance, be it dance or drama, has achieved the true purpose of an art as mentioned by Bharata. Bharata brings all the four Abhinayas together and says, Sattvika is the basis even for the other modes of Abhinaya, that is the Angika, Vachika and also Aharya. He says, art should bring in refinement in you and also to the society. So we as artists should be responsible to society with our art. We should be grateful to Padma Bhushan Guru Dr. Padma Subramanyam, who has revived and revolutionized the Marga tradition of Natya Shastra. She developed a pedagogy system based on the grammatical descriptions of Natya Shastra. Her path-breaking work in the theory and practice of the Marga tradition has been the inspiration in whatever I have shared today. Namaste. Yeah, that was about the, um, as I said, it's a very, very brief insight on uh, a subject which is as fast as emotion. Like these are, I agree, the most essential parts, movement and emotion. What are the other, um, you know, say, components or aspects of classical dance? Physically? As I uh, said in the beginning, Bharata in his Nati Shastra, which is the uh, one of the encyclopedic works on Indian arts, poetry, drama, theatre, etc., on literature. So he mentions about four mediums of uh, communication. The first one is Angika, where we communicate using other body movements. The second one is Vachika, where the uh, poetic representation, the words, the songs, the literature becomes very important for any performing arts. The third is Aharya, when you come to the Indian classical dance, makeup, jewelry, costume, stage, lighting, all these are extern external factors. All these are very important that we decorate ourselves, we adorn ourselves with all these things. That's an external part. And most important for all the three is the Sattvika Abhinaya, which you have to internalize. It, it is each dancer's perspective, how you internalize what you do and externalize the same. So these are the four modes of communication, Angika, Vachika, Aharya and Sattvika. Would you, would you tell uh, briefly about the other two aspects? There are four, as I said, Angika, Vachika, Aharya and Sattvika. Of course, uh, I have spoken a lot about Sattvika now. And Aharya, as I said, is a communication, external communication. For a dancer, when she goes on stage, costumes, jewelry, makeup, lighting, stage, all these are very important. So these form the Aharya. So body movements, music, external factors, and ultimately for all these things, what important is that your mental involvement. If you're not involved, everything else is, you know, not going to be working. I just want to know that if there is any book or something written uh, 
on this aspects or something like that yes that. the first and foremost book uh, for our reference is natya shastra which is uh, you know so amazing that 5000 years back Uh, the author of nati shastra adi bharata muni has covered every single aspect of performing arts that is you know literature visual arts music dance everything which is related to what we do today has been um, uh, written about 5000 years ago but uh, i think the equal credit has to go to the commentator of this uh, text um, uh, abhinava gupta so nati shastra is our main text but after that there are several other uh, scholars who have written uh, books or translations on this and uh, uh, you know one of the uh, my my favorite book uh, other than natya shastra is uh, my guru dr padma subramaniam's books on karanas which is i would say a mini encyclopedia on uh, natya shastra and every aspect of performing arts so i feel and i urge that every uh, student should read that book ma'am uh, i wanted to understand more about natya dharmi and loka dharmi that is uh, used during the uh, abhinaya while performing and also i wanted to understand when we can incorporate either uh, while performing how, how to incorporate in the right manner so uh, if you could give us some details into it yeah a uh, very interesting uh, question well uh, um, one of the uh, elements of natya shastra is dharmi and there are two uh, types of dharmi that is loka dharmi and natya dharmi loka means realistic me- way of communicating it's a realistic mode of interpretation and expression and uh, natya dharmi is more representational now the moment we are indian classical dancers we think that we have to uh, interpret it in a very uh, you know what do you say representational way but i think i would say that a blend of both uh, natya dharmi and loka dharmi is very very important in order to um, you know, create that rasa in the uh, audience uh, why i say this because dance is after all an imitation of the world and adi bharata muni in natya shastra mentions about three pramanas pramanas means that which leads to knowledge he says for an artist it is very important to um, keep in mind the three pramanas the first one is the veda when i say veda for us it is natya veda that is natya shastra that is the knowledge for us it is very important as artist that we have good amount of knowledge about what we do and second one he says loka loka means you know observation of the world like um, it is very important for an artist to observe the world how each one moves what is the kind of an emotion we express so it's very important that we keep an eye about on our uh, things around us ultimately it is uh, adhyatma means uh, what do you say an experience of the self when you look at it when you have a knowledge it is very important you make it your own and present it onto the stage so uh, having a right balance of uh, natya dharmi and loka dharmi will definitely um, uh, lead to rasa or uh, you know create interest in the audience Yes, uh, ma'am, yes, music. Yes. I have read division of music into two parts mm-hmm. in ancient times: Carnatic music and Indian music. So, uh, uh, this, do you agree with such division of uh, dividing into two uh, categories? A uh, Carnatic music, uh, music and Indian music. You know, I think it, uh, you meant to say Carnatic music and Hindustani music. Yes, if I'm wrong. Yeah, if I'm right. So uh, yes, it is definitely uh, uh, makes uh, all the point uh, that you know the division has uh, its own authenticity because uh, when it is Carnatic music, like we say, um, our our country is divided into uh, east, west, north, south, which we call it as uh, pravrittis, and uh, whatever dance forms that we present or whatever music. Uh, form that we follow is based on the regional influence that our particular state gives us on that matter uh, carnatic music has its own notations and grammar and the way of uh, execution and hindustani also has its own ragas and the way of executions and has its own notations and grammar and both are very different to each other and at the same time there is a lot of similarity between each other like how we say unity and diversity though these two forms are diverse there is still a unity and uh, there is all the reasons for it to be uh, you know claim its authenticity as uh, indian classical music genres she mentioned satvik abhinaya cannot be taught so how must an artist or a student try to implement those aspects in their dance ma'am 
Yeah, uh, very important, uh, very beautiful question. Well, um, as I said, bhava is uh, your mind. It's a personal emotion. So, and I also mentioned in my talk that for a student, the anubhavas, vibhavas and vyapicharis can be taught. But how you feel is, of course, based on your knowledge about what you're presenting and also your experience. So it's, it's important for every artist to understand what you present, like the lyrics, what it means. And there are a lot of underlying uh, information in a poetic or any literature. So first thing you have to try to understand what is the underlying essence of that particular literature. And then comes analyzing the character. And then comes analyzing the characteristics of that character and also analyzing the psychoanalysis of the situation and the uh, character. So this happens at a student level when a teacher is teaching you. And also a teacher can teach you how to feel or when she choreographs something, how to feel and what are the right emotions which is needed here. When she teaches you what are the right emotions which is needed, it is up to a dancer how much she tries to take it by herself, make it her own, and then with her experience, feel it. So your feeling is yours. We can take a horse to the water. And ultimately, it is your duty to drink, the horse's duty to drink the water. And ultimately, it's an uh, artist's journey to feel within and, uh, you know, uh, perform it in your own uh, experience. Like, for example, recently I, I uh, watched my students, uh, this is just about two days ago, I watched my students perform for a festival. And um, generally, we are very critical about uh, what we say, you know, not to praise much to the students. But I, uh, the moment I watched them, I said there was so much of bhava, there was so much of emotion in you. So probably it is uh, because of the experience and the practice and understanding what they're doing will bring about the emotions naturally. It can, the inner emotions cannot be taught. What are the food habits and personal habits followed by a practitioner of classical dance? Food habits and personal habits, okay. Um, well, uh, with this statement that uh, you are what you are in your day-to-day -day life, and uh, I think, yes, as a performing artist, because it's a visual art, so it is very important that we take care of certain aspects. Um, it is very interesting to say that 5,000 years ago, the author of Nati Shastra has even given a description about how a dancer should be. So uh, it is very important that we have right food habits. And when I say right food habits, of course, every health practitioner will talk about uh, nutrition in terms of uh, protein and carbohydrate and all that. But I think, I feel that you can eat what you wish to eat, but uh, the uh, it's very important to have a mental and uh, physical, um, you know, uh, balance and exercising, eating healthy and staying fit mentally. Uh, I think these are the habits, not only for a performing artist, but I think in general for everybody. But is there any documentary type uh, movies or something like videos? Is there, is it available on on Indian classical dance, there are yeah. several, yes, yes, there are several documentaries, especially uh, the documentation which has been done by the Doordarshan of uh, uh, our, uh, you know, our Doordarshan, mm -hmm. um, our uh, national channel of television. They have uh, documented many stalwarts uh, because there is so much to learn from the legends who have contributed in uh, different fields of Indian classical dance. But they have a beautiful documentation about these legends and their works.